from the dream which I used to talk about then of being able to take a wallet out of my pocket and perhaps open the wallet, press a button, close the wallet, and have the picture. Over 50 years ago today, Dr. Edward Land pulled this strange chrome and leather object out of his coat pocket. He popped it open, pressed the shutter button, and displayed to the world the first instant photograph. While having an instant picture today isn't truly quite as magical, Polaroid film still remains incredibly popular, and the SX-70 is still one of the only SLR instant cameras. Oh, thank God, it's 30 degrees in Melbourne. During the one and a half seconds after the shutter button has been pushed, and even during viewing, another story is going on inside the camera. This optical path from subject to eye is unique to this single lens reflex system. All elements are articulated to fold into a compact unit that folds flat. I have two variations of the SX-70 with me, one being the original chrome and another being one of the later plasticier models. While both cameras are constructed differently, they take identical photos and all feature the same glass lens. This fully glass lens, while being an aperture of f8, may not sound impressive, we have to consider that most instant camera lenses don't come anywhere close to f8. SX-70s can only take SX-70 film and this is limited to 160 ISO, so as you can imagine, a lens fixed at f8 and film that's 160 ISO, you're pretty much locked to strictly daylight photos. You can also attach flashes to the SX-70, I use these Sylvania one-use flashes, but a better cost-effective solution would be to buy a proper external flash like the Mint flash bar. All SX-70s have automatic exposure compensation and it can be tweaked with this dial here. Manual focus is controlled with the dial on the opposite side. My cameras are both manual focus, but they did also produce SX-70s that featured autofocus and even ones that had a built-in flash. The SX-70's 116mm f8 glass lens is capable of focusing as close as 26.4cm or 10.4 inches. This makes it extremely good for close-up macro photography and much better for this purpose than other Polaroid cameras like the 600 box cameras or the i-type cameras. This camera has a shutter speed range from 1 over 175 seconds to more than 10 seconds. One of my favourite aspects of the SX-70 is the design, and I suspect I share this thought with many others. The SX-70, especially in this original tan and chrome combination, looks amazing. The act of opening and closing this camera is extremely satisfying and it makes me want to use the camera more and more. I've had lots of people comment when they see me open the camera like this or even display it, how amazing they think it looks and they're shocked to believe that this was the first Polaroid camera. If you don't like the tan, I've changed mine to a slightly darker colour. The original colour would be more reminiscent of this. It's extremely easy to change your own leather. That being said, I think this camera is one of the most difficult and challenging cameras to get a nice photo from. I've shot about every kind of instant film and I can safely say SX-70 is the most pedantic about exposure, it seems to have very little latitude and most photos you take will either look way too overexposed or very underexposed. I find that photos tend to look better if you lean towards overexposure and it's mainly because the reproduction SX-70 film in general, it's not as nice as the stuff that was produced in the 70s and 80s. Those chemicals simply don't exist anymore. And the people that produced the film aren't the same people that made this camera and produced the original film. The new SX-70 film is a slightly faster ISO, so you have to manually adjust the exposure every single time you want to take a photo. And forgetting this could lead to some over or underexposed photos in general. 
The price of this film and the fact that it is hard to get a nice exposure can make it extremely frustrating to use, but when you get a nice photo, it's way more satisfying. And it's a sort of love-hate challenge that you get from using this camera. One of my least favorite aspects of the SX70 is the fact that this exposure compensation dial resets every single time you open and close the camera, which is essentially every single time you plan on taking a photo. This wouldn't be an issue if the film speed was the same as it originally was, but seeing as it's a different ISO now, forgetting to adjust this dial and taking your photo is 99% of the time going to result in a missed photo. Loading the SX70 is extremely simple. First, we must open our camera, locate the yellow lever here, depress that, that will open our film door, and then we simply insert our SX70 film pack, close the door, and watch the dark slide eject. Let's discuss reliability. These cameras were extremely well made, most of which being made in the USA, and the ones that weren't were made in Japan. While these cameras are extremely reliable, you have to consider that they were made close to 40, 50, and even 60 years ago. A common point of failure for these cameras is the plastic motor coupling. When this issue happens, you put the film into the camera and the motor will simply whir with nothing coming out of the camera and the mirror not flapping up. This is a essentially leaves the camera dead issue, but it's extremely easy to fix. And there are a lot of people that restore and fix SX-70s. They have a extremely big cult following and they sold millions and millions of these cameras. To repair this, you have to remove the leather, but chances are if you're buying an unrestored SX-70, the leather will be crumpled and destroyed anyway. Replacing the leather is extremely easy and it's something you can do at home. I myself have done this to both of my cameras. If you're handy with um, a bit of methylated spirits or isolated propyl alcohol, all you do is peel it off and have patience, keep rubbing until you've cleaned all that 50 year old goop off the camera. And then it's simply buy these replacement leather patches peel off the adhesive side and stick them to the camera. There are a ton of really nice accessories for the SX70 and most are being produced by new companies who are simply fans of the SX70 and want to add features to it. One of the most important features that I think is necessary for the SX70 is getting a flash. There's also self timer levers, um, straps, tripod mounts, for myself, I plan on purchasing the Mint flash bar and the self timer lever. These are two features that I think are essential to Polaroid cameras and especially the SX70 as most photos that aren't in extremely bright light will require a flash for this camera. One very useful SX70 accessory to have is the ND filter. This ND filter is specifically designed for Polaroid cartridges this means that instead of putting an ND filter over the lens and darkening my viewfinder, I can simply put it on the cartridge and this allows me to shoot 600 film in the SX70. You'll have to note that while we're shooting 600 film, the ISO is not 600. We are simply shooting 600 ISO film at 160 ISO. The benefit of doing this is 600 film can be often found for cheaper and 600 film is much more likely to be found in a store as opposed to SX70 which you would mainly have to get online or directly from Polaroid. When purchasing your own SX70 you have to make note of what features are important to you. The newer SX70s, while they're not as well made, being made from the plastic instead of the chrome body, they do feature quarter inch tripod mounts and strap lugs. These are two features that are sorely lacking from the original camera and features that I think most photographers would want to have, especially having a tripod mount. If you have a tripod and the self-timer button for this camera, it's gonna make it extremely easier to get nice photos from it. If you want more of a challenge, you can shoot handheld. You just have to note that the shutter speeds on this camera are extremely slow. 
and you're gonna have to have a very steady hand. So what are some alternatives for this camera? If you want an SLR instant camera, there are very few other options to choose from other than the SX70. If you wanna shoot SX70 film, then obviously you'll have to purchase one of these cameras. If you just want to shoot frames that are this size and not specifically SX70 cameras, you can purchase a 600 camera or an I-type camera. The ISO is higher and you might get better results. I found that those photos tend to have more latitude than the SX70. As well as this, I-type and 600 photos tend to be a bit cheaper and a bit easier to find. SX70 film is something that you'd have to purchase mostly online or from Polaroid itself. That being said, I think the SX70 is still a fantastic camera and a challenge if you want to shoot really sharp, amazing Polaroid photos. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to like and comment. Your feedback is always appreciated, whether it be good or bad. Thank you for watching.